I just pressed start on our thing. We got it counting down 26 seconds into the trip. This is definitely a first. I've never felt anything like this. Well, it's day two and so far things are going much better than it, they were yesterday, knock on wood. Uh, the captain's feeling much better. He's no longer seasick and that just makes yeah. such a world of difference. The captain's happy, then everybody's happy. And look at these beautiful turquoise water. We have some fishing boats up ahead. We can see them with our eyes, but we can't see them in the AIS yet. But we kind of expected that. We're in the fish haven over here. Another thing that's better so far today is that the waves have calmed down. It's really not as rocking and rolling and that just makes for a much pl more pleasant ride. Made us a little brunchy snack, healthy. So we're like 22 to 25 miles offshore and we haven't seen any boats for quite a while, which is glorious. However, we're in fish haven Fisherman Haven, something like that. And there are a lot of fishermen out here. I just can't believe that they cruise all the way out here to fish. As we now head off into this open area, the waves and swells will get bigger and we'll be in something like 80 or 90 feet of water. We're still beating into a wind that's kind of up and down, so we're doing something like four knots. And we have about 77 miles to go to the entrance to Key West. Here's a good example of when we're just sailing along just fine and then all of a sudden the wind kind of shifts and we lose the sails. And that's the part where we slow down so much so the motor just takes up the slack and keeps us at our minimum speed. Even though we're way out in the middle of nowhere, it says there's a lighted tower out here. So let's see what that's all about. End of day two, we have another night and then part of tomorrow. Sun is setting and uh, we'll see you tonight. Since we were so close to the wind, we got a little off track. So we we're making a jog and sailing for an hour or so, just 90 degrees to our course to try and tack back onto our regular course. As the sun went down, we'd be entering our most isolated sailing area. The winds picked up overnight, but we're still so close to the wind and we can't veer off our course. We have the Genoa Traveler moved way back to keep the bottom of the sail from flapping, and the mainsail traveler is all the way windward with the sail pulled in tight. So we're just on the verge of flapping the sails if we turn another few degrees into the wind. I'm taking this opportunity when the waves aren't so big and we're still motor sailing to go ahead and fill up the fuel tank with five gallons more of fuel just in case. So we're not trying to do it later on in case the wind and waves increase. puts us beating into the waves and we can't really vary that because we can't just tack around all day we need to get there by a certain time we don't have the luxury of going wherever we want and taking as much time as we can we have to get there before dark so 
when we turn the motor off, we might sail at five or six knots, but then the wind dies for a second. We just lose our ground and we keep going like this, slowly getting off track. And then to get back on track, we're back towards Key West. We can't sail because it's we're so close. We're, we're close hauled. We have everything pulled in tight. We have the traveler moved way back to keep that from fluttering. And um, we did just ease the main a little bit because we were healing past 15 degrees. So uh, that that's good. And we're hitting what four and a half to five now. And um, if the wind starts to hold and doesn't, it goes from like 15 to five. When it goes down to five, we go too slow. But I think we're starting to get a more consistent wind and it's starting to turn. So we might be able to uh, turn the engine off here in a minute. Uh, I was up on the front there trying to do something and my emergency locator beacon got flashed, uh, splashed. 13 miles to go, 13.8. Well, that's only to get to the inlet though, to Key West, not to actually be all the way in. 13 miles. So around like 11, 50 or 12, we might get in there. And then three more hours in the channel probably. All right, today's forecast. We're tired, we haven't slept that much. And today's forecast is uh, 10 to 12 and it's a close haul right now and it's supposed to increase to 15 but go more westerly so hopefully we can ease the sails and get a little less healing and well i was recording that video susie started talking because she's trying to survive in here and she's Falling hanging on yeah I, I don't think i can let go right now no, it's I'll rough. I'll fall right into the other settee over there. I think the big waves settle down a little bit, so we don't have this big crashing. Like, look how the, the, the deck is wet because water, like the bow goes almost under and splashes over. So thank God we have this um, dodger. Um, but anyways, there's, see, there's, you probably can't see the camera, but there's a bigger one here we're going to go down. And then, so I don't think they're big enough like they were earlier though. They're a little better angle too, because when we were hitting them head on, like all night, we had to motor sail because when you smash into those waves, you just slow down so much. And so let's say you're going even five knots, but then we hit these waves and being that this isn't a blue water boat that weighs 30,000 pounds, I think it gets slowed down easily by those big waves. You can't just punch through them. I made the sails, you know, you'd want to have them for some power, but when you're so close hauled that they're so tight they're almost flapping, it's hard to do that. I think at some point this morning we'll see the Key West Express come by us sometime uh, maybe the next half hour to hour. We've noticed that even though we have this great AIS receiver here so we can see where ships are, the fishing boats don't want to broadcast their position because I guess it's like a trade secret or whatever where they're fishing. So. That really sucked because all night we'd see fishing boats in the dark. We had a little weird excursion with one where we saw like six lights in the water. We didn't know what it was up ahead because we didn't realize they had all these bright white lights. It looked like, I mean, it's just a massive amount of like LED lights everywhere. And At first it looked like buoys and on yeah. the map it said it was some kind of naval training naval center. Naval training center, yeah. And it said, um, So you see them, like right now there's two off in the distance way up there under the sail. And they're headed in a direction that we're, we should intersect them, but they're not on the AIS. Um, once in a while there's one or two that will be on there, like they do broadcast it, but many, most of them don't. Oh boy, of course I'm at the wheel. Yeah. Eight minutes till intersection. Timer that I don't know what it's for. Woo, finally sailing. 
I just went in to go to the bathroom and it's like that was that was that was really challenging to uh, try and get in there and just I mean it's really angled and the waves are you know it's just it's tough um, so I wanted to say something I said made a video about the AIS a while ago these two fishing boats over here as we were approaching when they were out that way because I had been watching the AIS and nothing was on it, but I could see them right there. And then as we got closer and he saw us, he turned his AIS on um, and then our alarm went off for a collision. Really, because I have it set that if we come within one mile of another ship or something, it'll go off. You can set all those parameters. And so the AIS went off and then a little later he turned it back off. So I'm sure he just saw me and thought, well, what if I'm sleeping and I don't see him because he's anchored. So we just, and there it is again. Land ho. You hear the bell? Yeah. Well, we've almost officially made it. We are sailing into the Northwest Channel. Sixteen feet deep here. Doing five knots. Doing five knots. Gorgeous day out here in Key West. Holy cow! We've almost made it. Yay! We didn't die. <laughs> Not yet, anyways. But hey. just getting in this channel was confusing to me because everywhere we boat, the channels are pretty small, and uh, I went in the channel when there's all these boats off to the sides and. You'd think it'd be really deep, right? Like big ships would go in and out, but it's really not. It's like up up in the, oh, it is 27 feet there, I guess. But off to the sides, it's like 12 and 8. And uh, anyhow, it's just a new area for me, and I, I don't have any landmarks that I recognize. We did bring our powerboat here once, but, um, you know, the draft on that's like a foot, so it was no big deal. But it's looking pretty. We're in 18 feet of water. The water looks really pretty. And uh, we got our micheladas poured. And got our micheladas, ready. yep. Cheers. Nice. I'm sailing with the Genoa only because I'm a little uncomfortable with uh, having the mainsail out in the channel. If I want to put the main away, I have to shoot into the wind, aim into the wind, and I don't know that I want to just drive one way if, if it's, you know, I don't know how far off the channel I can go or if, if I can even do that. So. At least with the Genoa, we can just roll it up when we don't want it anymore, and we're doing four knots on it. I think we have maybe like an eight or ten knot solid, nice breeze that just keeps coming. And uh, it's just kind of perfect. Okay. Oh, wow, look at that. Holy cow, it looks really good. Thank you. We went on that boat Glass once. Boat. Yeah. Glass bottom boat? Oh man, that sounds better. For this weather, that sounds great. A glass bottom boat. Oh, look at the wake. waves out here and we're motoring because we're kind of getting into the channel now but I feel like we're a little outclassed by the sea in this 28 foot sailboat with this uh we can only hit about three knots in this current. Susie's up there getting the dock line on to hand to the dock master. It feels so weird to be driving in vision next to a cruise ship. Super sketch coming in here. It's like really sketchy. Look at this. Yep, yep. Am 
might not be obvious in the video, but from being in that heavy current and those waves and around the cruise ship, our nerves are fried at this point, so we're so happy to see this guy taking our lines. All right, we want to do a bunch of things, but we're stressed as F because that was harrowing in all aspects from beginning to end, and it's not over yet. But the dock master was extra helpful. I don't know. I mean, we could have done it without him, but it would have been oh, tricky. He spun us around. Well, you saw it. He spun I, us I, around. I got a good video of it. Oh, I'm really grateful for that dock master right yeah. now. Yeah. That was tricky in the channel here. We were just outclassed, not enough horsepower all right. and all that. Thanks for getting us here. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Ow, oh, my toe. Well, we went and took showers. Feeling fresh. Feeling fresh. I mean, that was, we were, I didn't shower in two days. I brought that camp shower, but it was too crazy on deck to go use it. It was too insane. So we went, they have showers here. We were able to shower. That's kind of why I wanted a marina instead of staying on uh, a uh, on, on, on anchor because we wanted to be able to shower, walk to go out to eat, and you know if we had two weeks we might stay on a morning ball, but even then, that's rough in it, you know. So, anyways, we're here. We're gonna go eat dinner or have a snack, drink some more drinks, maybe have a shot of some rum first, and uh, see what happens. feel so overwhelmed right now just having done this not just sailing to Key West but this whole adventure of sailing and now we're here and it's a personal dream come true to have done this it's just an amazing experience 